OK, hi there. Let's think about uh, another synoptic question, a topical issue. That is the, the impact of a fall in inward migration into a country such as the UK. Well, here's the data on migration. Uh, typically, an exam is written 12, 16, 18 months before you actually take it. So if you get some data, then typically the data will have finished in, let's say, 2017. Uh, Long-term international net migration, that's the, the balance between immigration and emigration figures, have broadly remained stable in the UK since the end of 2016. Of course, the referendum was in June of 2000 of that year. Uh, there's been a, a modest fall in net migration. It still remains over 250,000 per year, but down from over 300,000 in 2015. So what about uh, the micro-macro distinction? This is the key to thinking synoptically. Show the examiners you've got a good range of points to make on both the micro side and also the macro side. Well, we're thinking about a fall in migration, so the micro impact could think about uh, the impact on labour supply, for example, to certain occupations and sectors in the economy. Consider, for example, uh, the possible decline in a number of people from EU countries coming to work in farming or social care uh, or the NHS. That would be a good micro point to think about. Linked with that would be the possible effects on on wages, real wages in the labour market and possibly the impact on employment more generally. If you want to think about the impact on the housing market, again, that would be a microeconomic aspect. Uh, for example, the, the, if it was a fall in migration, to what extent would this have an impact on the demand for rented property in towns and cities? Again, you could focus on the individual businesses or sectors, the possible effects on the costs and profits of employers, particularly if they find it difficult to get uh, the, the supply of skilled labour. How are they going to replace migrant workers who might leave? What about the increase in spending on training and education? Uh, the possible consequences of that. Also, you could take a local economy perspective. Think about the areas of the, econ of the economy where migration has been particularly prevalent for example, in the east of England or in our major cities. But microeconomics is just thinking about the consequences at the level of the business, the individual labour market or for individual households. Uh, macroeconomics, you cannot go wrong if you go back to your main macro objectives. This is one of the key themes of the exam. So migration has both uh, a micro and macro effect, but also it also has an aggregate demand and aggregate supply effect. So, for example, consider the possible impact on the labour force, the size of the active labour force and the consequences for the PPF, the trend growth of potential GDP. Does a fall in migration diminish inflationary pressure or does it increase inflationary pressure, particularly in terms of the supply of skilled labour? What about the overall effect on the rate of unemployment if migration falls? What about the possible consequences for labour productivity and for broader measures of competitiveness. There could also be quite significant effects on the current account of the balance of payments, particularly if there's a fall in net remittance income uh, leaving the UK from migrants working in the UK who typically send their money back to the country of origin. So growth, inflation, jobs, productivity, trade balance, uh, these are you know, this is the stuff, isn't it, of macroeconomics, and that's what you would probably focus on, making good use of ADAS analysis. Of course, you need to evaluate the arguments. Uh, so we've seen a fall in net migration from the EU since 2016, but actually there's been a rise in inward migration from outside of the EU. So the net figure has remained more or less the same. It's down by about 40,000, 50,000. The impact on an economy also depends on the causes of a fall in migration. There are always both push and pull factors at work. Is it that other countries are, doing, are being more successful? Or is it fears over Brexit uncertainty? You know, what are the underlying causes of the change? Third point is, is tremendously important for evaluation. The impact on of a fall in migration depends not just uh, on the level of migration, but also changes in the structure or the pattern of migration. So who's who's leaving the UK? So what's, what's, what's the impact on the quality of human capital, uh, the age, the, the qualifications, the experience of people who are leaving? That's going to make a, a big difference. Also important to distinguish between 
short-term effects and medium-term effects on the UK economy. Don't, don't just think about the short-term immediate uh, consequences, but the, uh, the longer-term impact. And also think about the impact on the country of origin. So if there's a fall in net migration from the UK, from, for example, from Poland or from the Baltic states or from Slovakia, Slovenia, what are the consequences on the country of origin? Are they necessarily going back to those countries or are they choosing somewhere else to, to live and work? So consider the brain drains or reverse brain drains and the possible effects on trade and investment with the UK. Crucially, I think if you get a question on migration, you have to use the data clearly, but please, please, please try to keep politics out of your answer. The examiners are not interested and will not will not reward at all. I feel like a political diatribe. They're looking for analysis, application of data and evaluation. So please stick to the economics. And in a question on migration, there's always a lot of micro and macroeconomics that you can bring to play. Okay, thank you.